Good morning, students. Welcome to my online history classes. Moving on with the topic, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. Now, since I talked in the in the previous video that two important questions uh, normally come on Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. One, his early life and travels, which we have already done. Now, today we'll be we will be talking about the second question, that is the martyrdom of the Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. Now. Whenever we have to answer the question on Guru's martyrdom, uh, we have to keep into account the three aspects that we will be dealing about. Of course, the introduction has to be written. You have to conclude in which you will assess the martyrdom. But besides that, there are three important aspects which you will be talking about. One, the causes. Why was Guru martyred? Number two, how was Guru martyred? Number three, what was the importance, the impact, the significance of this martyrdom? So let's start with the first topic, that is why Guru was martyred. You know, in history, uh, people always say it's very difficult to learn. There are so many points, there are so many dates. But I must tell you, there is a way to learn things in history. Now, the causes. Now, if you understand the causes, they are about six points. So why not use the first letters of these words and make a word? So it will become very easy for you to remember the word. And from this word, you can remember how you will be writing the causes. The word that I've made for you is sacrifice. Although in this I and C will not be used. Now, sacrifice, S the spread of Sikhism, A, Aurangzeb's conversion policy, C, call of the Kashmiri Pandits, R, Ram Rai's enmity, I, impact of Naqshbandis on Aurangzeb, F, fanaticism of Aurangzeb, E, enmity between Mughal and the Sikh. So these are the six causes, in fact, uh, seven causes that we will be talking about. Now, many of you might think that can we omit one or two? See, I would always recommend that uh, in case uh, the question is too uh, large, in a sense, they've asked about the entire detailed note on, on, on this martyrdom of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, and it is difficult to write so much of material. In that case, I would say, please write all the points. Maybe the inner details can be reduced, right? So let's move on to our causes one by one. So I hope this word is easy to remember, sacrifice. And when you remember this word, you will not forget any of the points to be learned for the causes of the martyrdom. Now, number one, the spread of Sikhism. Now, we already talked about the travels Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji had undertaken in states like Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Bengal, and Assam. So, by his travels, Sikhism had become a very popular religion. Impressed by the personality of Guru, thousands embraced Sikh religion. Now, for a fanatic like Aurangzeb, it was beyond his power of tolerance to see the rapidly growing power of Sikhism. So, first reason for the martyrdom of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji is the spread of Sikhism. Number two, Aurangzeb's conversion policy. The year after he assumed power in 1658, Aurangzeb appointed Mohtasip or the censors of public morals from the rank of clergy or the ulma or what we have a counterpart is Brahman in Hindus in every large city. He was keen that Islamic law or the Sharia should be followed everywhere and the practices which are not acceptable to Islam like the consumption of alcohol, gambling should not be allowed in public. John F. F. Richards, an eminent historian, he says that Aurangzeb's ultimate aim was conversion of non-Muslims to Islam. He said he wanted to convert Dar ul Harab, a land ruled by non-believers, to Dar ul Islam. Thousands were forcibly converted. Refusal was met with death sentence. And it is here that Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji uh, wanted to stem this tide of intolerance and that is why he was martyred. The third is the call of the Kashmiri Pandits. Now in this picture, if you see uh, quite clearly, you can see 
that there is um, the delegation of these Kashmiri Pandits uh, who had come to Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji to seek his uh, blessing and to seek his protection because Aurangzeb was on a spree of conversion. Let's talk about it in detail. Now, in early 1675, these Kashmiri Pandit had met Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji because they needed his assistance, his protection. Now, these Hindus, who were these Kashmiri Pandits? They were actually the Hindus who had been living in Kashmir, but now they had been given a deadline by Emperor Aurangzeb to get converted into Islam or to be killed. Now, Pandit Kirpa Ram, with his large delegation, had come to meet Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji at Chak Nanki, now known as Anandpur Sahib. So, he had explained the dilemma, the situation he was in, now, when Pandit Kirpa Ramji requested him to help him in this uh, circumstance, in this uh, dire need, he actually went into a deep thought. At this point, his own son, Gobind Rai, walked, to see, to, walked into the Sangat to see Guruji deep in his thought. Guruji, when he saw the sad face of Guruji, he said, I see the sad faces of Sangat and you are silent. And in the deep thought, what is the problem? Now, Gobind Rai, who is just nine years old, is asking his father, why is he sad? What is he thinking about? Guruji tried to explain all these six circumstances to a nine-year-old son. And he said, Beta, this is Sangat Fokar from Kashmir. They are Hindus who have been friends of Sikh since the time of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. They have a serious problem on their hand. Gobind Rai replied, Pitaji, you are the guru of the entire world. You know of a solution to all problems. Guru said, Beta, Emperor Aurangzeb has given them an ultimatum. If they do not become Muslims, he will kill them all. Guruji continued, Some well-known religious person Mahapurak will have to make a sacrifice to stop this but butchery. We have to find a supreme soul who is ready to lay his life for the protection of these people. Gobind Rai, without thinking for a moment, he said, Pitaji, there is an easy answer to this problem. You are the most spiritually aware person in the whole of Hind. You can make that sacrifice, answered Gobind Rai. Guruji was pleased because he now knew the solution was right within him and Guruji's work on the earth had been completed. Guruji at once addressed the Pandit. He said, go and tell Aurangzeb that if you can convert Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji to Islam, then all the Kashmiri Pandits will be converted. But if you are unable to convert Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, then you cannot convert the Kashmiri Pandits. The Pandits were very happy that solution was found and they duly informed Emperor Aurangzeb of the decision. Now Aurangzeb was delighted because he knew that if I am able to convert one person, that is Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, then without any further delay, he will be able to convert thousands of Hindus to Islam. So quickly, he called Guru to Delhi. He summoned his officers to arrest Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji and get him to Delhi. So we have done our three reasons. Let's go back to the word sacrifice, if you remember. Right. So we have done S, that is spread of Sikhism. We have done Aurangzeb's conversion policy. We have done C, that is the call of the Kashmiri Pandit. Now let's do the rest of the word. So we will be starting with the uh, enmity of Ram Rai, Ram Rai's enmity. Now if you remember, who was Ram Rai? I need an instant answer. Who was Ram Rai? Okay, if you answered it that Ram Rai was the elder son of Guru Har Krishanji, then you are correct. So Ram Rai was the elder brother of Guru Har Krishanji and considered himself to the right person to be on the Gurgadi. 
when guru har krishan ji was given the gurgaddi he could not tolerate he started poisoning the ears of aurangzeb and this poisoning ultimately led to the martyrdom of guru teg bahadur ji impact of the nakshbandis on aurangzeb now as we have as i have discussed in my previous videos uh, nakshbandi was a sect of fanatic muslims and they had immense influence on the mughal emperor so because even they could see that how sikhism is becoming so popular how guru teg bahadur ji is becoming so popular so they also wanted to stem the tide of this religion now since they wanted only islam to be the religion of land so they started poisoning the ears of aurangzeb to take a stern action against the sikh six fanaticism of aurangzeb now in 1658 when aurangzeb became the new mughal ruler we have to remember that he did not even uh, leave behind uh, his brothers his father he was an absolute staunch sunni muslim who wanted to see islam flourish in every nook and corner of india which bothered bothered bordered his approach towards same as that of the fanatic now i don't think any uh, any fanatic person any orthodox muslim or any orthodox person would ever tolerate the popularization of another religion and popularization of a saint now and being a fanatic what could he have done one he got many hindu temples demolished restrictions were imposed on the hindu festivals and ceremonies during his reign people were forced to embrace islam at the point of sword and if somebody refused to become uh, accept being an, uh, a muslim he was put to death or imprisoned aurangzeb not only demolished the temples but also ordered all the gurdwaras to be demolished and all the masand collecting money to be exiled now confrontation with such a fanatic ruler was inevitable for the sikh seventh the enmity between the moguls and the sikh now before we try to understand why guru was martyred and later we will be talking about the creation of khalsa this point is very very important now you have to understand that till 1605 that is till akbar the relation between the sikh and the moguls were very cordial again i've talked about this in my previous video uh, i've talked about the relationship between guru nanak dev ji and babar between himayu and guru angad dev ji between akbar and guru amar das and guru ram das now the relation between the two were very cordial in fact the mughal rulers regarded the sikh gurus as saint but in 1606 the new emperor jahangir was a fanatic he martyred guru arjan dev ji and because guru arjan dev ji was martyred guru har gobind had to take up arms and he took upon him the new policy later jahangir imprisoned guru har gobind ji in gwalior fort till the relations became normal between the two in 1628 shah jahan comes as the next mogul ruler again shah jahan and guru har gobind had to fight numerous battles and after shah jahan it is the reign of aurangzeb the enmity between the sikh and the mogul now really increased and this enmity between the two became the cause for guru teg bahadur ji's martyrdom now while i was uh, you know just trying to jot down the important points that if we just you know don't think about these major points that if we have uh, done the sacrifice word where we have also made this word from if you just understand it very simple words see what aurangzeb was doing that he was forcibly converting people into islam if they were not being converted they were met with the death sentence but what guru wanted was that people should be given the right to profess any religion and this right was being denied by mughal emperor aurangzeb so guru he laid a supreme sacrifice to protect the kashmiri pandits and he earned for himself the title hind ki chadar 
Now, this is a very uh, nice photograph I came across on the internet. Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji addressing the Sangat. Now, I would not mention the Sikh Sangat because Sangat here just me means when the people of different caste, of different genders, of different economical strata used to all sit together and hear the sermons of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. Now, the other thing is, how was Guru martyred? Now, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, along with three companions, Bhai Matidas, Bhai Satidas, Bhai Diala Ji, they proceeded from Chak Nanki, that is Shri Anandpur Sahib, to Delhi on July 11, 1675. Now, another important interesting thing, if you wonder that he left Delhi on July 11th, but Guru was martyred on the 11th of November. So what really happened from July to November? So when, while he was moving towards Delhi, Aurangzeb ordered that Guru and his companions should be taken in the prison in Sarhang for four months. For these four months, Guru was constantly asked to accept Islam, but Guru for these four months did not accept the demand of Aurangzeb to be a Muslim. Later, when Guru refused to accept Islam, Guru along with his companions was brought to Delhi on 6 November 1675. Again, Guru was asked to change into a Muslim to accept Islam. When Guru denied to do so, just to demoralize Guru, his three companions were brutally murdered in front of him. Then again, Guru was asked to show a miracle. Now Guru said that in Sikhism, one is not allowed to show the miracle. So on his refusal to do so, on 11th November 1675, he was beheaded in Chandani Chowk in Delhi. It seemed to be the darkest day in the annals of the Mughal rule in India. Guru Gobind Singh, in his book, Bachitra Natak, writes, At the departure of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, the entire world was plunged into grief. There was a cry of horror in this world, but the shrieks of victory and welcome in the next world. On that fateful night, a devotee, Bhai Lakhi Shah, picked up the body of Guru Sahib. And you must all may, or there's another fact to be told here that Aurangzeb has said, whosoever picks up the severed head and the body of Guru will also be killed. But a Sikh devotee, Bhai Lakhi Shah, he picked up the body of Guru Sahib and with the help of his sons, brought it to his home in a cart covered with cotton bales. In order to cremate the body, he set his own house to fire. Here, Gurdwara Rakab Ganj stands here. Bhai Jetaji, who belonged to a low caste Rangreta, brought the head of Guru Tegh Bahadur at Anandpur Sahib. Guru Gobind Singh warmly hugged Jeta and called him his own son, Rangreta Guru Ka Beta. On 6th November, 16th November, 1675, the severed head of Guru was cremated with full honours at Siri Anandpur Sahib. Gurdwara Sis Ganj has been built up here. Now these are the pictures of how the Guru was martyred. Uh, and this is an extremely, uh, you know, shocking picture where Guru's head was severed from his body. And uh, as I told you before, two people are quite important in this. One, uh, uh, Bhai Lakisha, he brought the body of the Guru and there the Gurdwara Rakab Gan stands. The other is your Bhai Jetaji and where the Guru's head was cremated, Gurdwara Sis Ganj has been built up there. Hind Di Chadar Guru Teg Bahadur Ji now, now, if we move on to the questions, we have done the causes, right? Now, if you remember, we, were, we had to do the three aspects. So we have done the causes. We have done how the guru was martyred. Now, something on the impact of the martyrdom. 
what was the impact of what was the significance uh, how did it lead to the turn of events after his martyrdom so we'll be talking about it just a quick revision of the points that we will be dealing about a great historical event feeling of revenge among the sick protection of hindus creation of khalsa beginning of tradition of sacrifice battles between the sick and the moguls now first the great historical event now history of the world is full of sacrifices now these sacrifices have either been made for the protection of one's religion or for the sake of country but here the story was different because guru tegh bahadur ji made supreme sacrifice for the protection of the downtrodden and not for the protection of the religion to which he belonged and that is why he has earned the rightful name hind the chadar the next is the feeling of revenge among the sikh the martyrdom of guru tegh bahadur sent a wave of hatred and revenge in the whole punjab against the mughal empire the people swore to put an end to the tyrannical rule of the moguls then the protection of the hindus the third point that we will be talking now aurangzeb wanted to convert the whole of india to islam with this end in view he had let loose a reign of terror large number of hindus were daily put to death so many of the hindus under these circumstances had started adopting islam it seemed the very existence of hindu religion was exposed to great danger under such times hindus when hindus saw no ray of hope guru teg bahadur ji gave his own sacrifice in order to protect the hindu faith the next point creation of khalsa martyrdom of guru teg bahadur ji made it clear to the sikh that in order to defend their religion it was most essential for them to wear arms with this view in with this end in with this view in their mind and to infuse a new spirit in the sikh guru har gobind ji performed a great deed by creating khalsa pant on the day of basakhi in 1699 this creation of khalsa gave birth to such a fearless community which thoroughly smashed the powerful rule of the moguls and afghans in punjab the other point beginning of the tradition of sacrifice after the martyrdom of guru teg bahadur ji a tradition of making sacrifice for the religion started while walking on this path guru gobind singh ji underwent several untold sufferings we will be talking about this uh, about uh, this important point when we will be taking up guru gobind singh ji his younger sahibzadas sahibzada zurawar singh and sahibzada fateh singh were bricked alive in the wall his two elder sons ajit singh and jujar singh and many other devoted sikh who were the beloved of guru sahib fell martyrs in this battle last but not the least the battle between the sikh and the moguls now after this the battle between the sikh and the moguls started in these battles the sikh had to face innumerable hardships but they stood firm like rock so this was the impact of the martyrdom of guru teg bahadur ji now when you talk about the importance you will also talk about the assess- assessment of the martyrdom i know this question is very lengthy there are various aspects to it and it is all the more difficult when you want to write everything in your answer and i am also aware that time is limited the number of sheets are limited but i would only suggest that you have to learn <coughs> you have to learn the entire answer and depending on the how the question comes you can answer it the, the same way now when you assess the martyrdom you have to understand was the guru's martyrdom for political reasons or for religious reasons let me give you about a minute to ponder and then i will discuss what was the what was the assessment all about <clears throat> now if we say the martyrdom was for political reasons 
if many of you believe that way then they are historians like mohammad latif gulam hussein uh, jadu nath sarkar james brown cunningham and trump they believe that the martyrdom of guruji was because of the political reasons now they say that guru had established a state within a state through the masand system he was collecting taxes so for a person for a emperor like aurangzeb to see anybody as as another supreme power this was the only alternative he had right so i don't know how far do you agree with this the other historians who believe that it is for the religious reasons are macluff uh, indu bhushan banerji professor ganda singh ss johan kushwan singh and hari ram gupta now indu bhushan banerji he says that or for all those historians who say that it was for the political reason let me remind them that guru tegh bahadur ji was undoubtedly a peace loving man and before the assumption of guruship he led a life of an ascetic he wanted to be called as tegh bahadur deg d e g deg bahadur rather than tegh bahadur his tolerance becomes evident from his treatment of his relatives and masand Macluff holds a similar view. He says that events described by the Muslim writers are not consistent with the life and compositions of Guru Tegh Bahadur. Similar views have also been expressed by Kushwan Singh and Hari Ram Gupta. Now, in your uh, history books, more details uh, details have also been given about these historians. I would ask you to please refer to your books as well. so now we have come to the end of this question uh, it has been a very long question because we have talked about the causes we have uh, talked about the how guru was martyred about the impact about the assessment um, in the end if i just want to sum up exactly what really happened was now i would say the supreme sacrifice made by guru tegh bahadur ji stemmed the tide of intolerance in the subcontinent and inculcated in people respect for other religion thank you so much once again for listening to this video i know it is little tough because lots of points to be discussed but i am sure that once you listen to my video once you understand what the whole uh, you know topic is all about go back to your books read and i hope this topic will be absolutely clear to you again any kind of queries you have put your responses in the in in the in the comment section and not only positive i do want to hear the negative uh, comments on this thank you so much children and hope to see you again with a new video